Hello everyone. Welcome to our first webinar on XSLT development with Oxygen. My name is George Vina. I am one of the founders of Syncrosoft, the company that develops Oxygen XML Editor. Oxygen started in 2001 as a development tool for XML and it grew over time to cover both XML development and XML authoring. Syncrosoft uh, started in 1998, 15 years ago, and it is focused exclusively on developing Oxygen. XSLT was supported since our first Oxygen release, and even now it is the best supported XML technology in Oxygen. XSLT is also a very popular technology this can be seen also from the level of interest in this uh, webinar. Uh, more than uh, 750 people uh, registered to attend this event. I invited my colleague Octavian uh, to present you how Oxygen can help developing XSLT transformations. Our agenda today is outlined here. Uh, we'll start with a short introduction followed by uh, an overview of what we will try to cover in this webinar. Then Octavian will take you to explore how Oxygen helps with XSLT editing, XSLT validation and applying XSLT transformations. At the end we will have a dedicated uh, question and answer section and uh, we will finish with an invitation to meet us again either virtually at another webinar or uh, in person at one of our upcoming conferences. During the webinar you can ask questions using the questions panel in your GoToWebinar interface. You can also use Twitter to ask questions. In that case please use the OxygenXML hashtag to allow us to easily identify uh, those questions. Along with me and Octavian, we have here six other colleagues from our team ready to answer your questions. So you don't need to wait until the dedicated question and answer section. At the end, you should be able to uh, ask questions anytime during the webinar. Uh, before we start, uh, we have one question for you and we will be interested to see what XSLT version do you use. Uh, let me launch this. So you can choose either none. I do not use XSLT in case you are considering using XSLT. And then XSLT1, XSLT2 or uh, and XSLT3 if you explore what it will be available in version 3 of uh, XSLT. Okay, I will close this in uh, 10 seconds and share the results with you. Okay, so we have uh, a good number of beginners, it seems that uh, are exploring to use XSLT. Then uh, XSLT2 is uh, used by most of the people, which is what I would expect. Uh, there are some people uh, stuck in with XSLT1 or using XSLT1 due probably to some uh, constraints on the systems they use. Uh, and good number of people are exploring also what XSLT3 uh, brings. So thank you for uh, participating in this uh, and let's move on to an overview. Uh, I made a diagram that you can find uh, either here if you have flash or use the HTML link, I will paste this in uh, in the GoToMeeting uh, chat window. 
so you can find that and click on this to get to this page uh, and I also have it here uh, we structured the XSLT development with Oxygen in three webinars uh, the first webinar today covers the core functionality and we will show you the editing, uh, the validation, transformation and generating documentation for your XSLT style sheets. The second webinar uh, in June 5th will uh, explore what Support Oxygen provides when you need to work with more complex transformations when the XSLT logic is split between multiple modules. The third webinar will uh, show the XSLT debugger, the XSLT profiler and the support for integrated unit testing. You can explore uh, each category uh, to see more details following uh, the links uh, available on that page I posted on the chat. Uh, but I will not take too much time with this because uh, I want to allow uh, enough time for Octavian to show his presentation. So uh, we'll move on. I'll give control now to Octavian. Hello everybody, my name is Octavian. I'm a member of the Oxygen team for almost 10 years now and uh, I work mostly on the XML developing part in Oxygen. Uh, in this presentation we will focus on the editing, validation and transformation features that we provide for XSLT. Uh, so to exemplify these features in Oxygen I made a simple example. Uh, we have here an XML file that contains a uh, list with uh, recommended books and I want to create a style sheet in order to generate an HTML file with uh, these books. The XML file contains information about the book uh, like uh, the title, the author, the image of the book and some additional information and I want to generate an HTML file uh, that should look like this so for each book uh, an image should be generated, the title, then the author and uh, the description of the, the book. So now I'll switch to Oxygen and I'll show you the book's XML file. We see that uh, this XML file has a namespace and a schema and here we have uh, the list of books. So each book has its title, author image and description. And I have also a template. The HTML file should look like this. So here it's head, a body, then a title and a table and in the table I want to create uh, for each book from, from the XML a uh, row that displays the information about the book. So the first step is to create a new style sheet and add some elements in it. Let's switch to Oxygen, right click in project, new file and here I'll select XSLT style sheet and set a name for this. So I'll create a new style sheet from scratch. I'll customize this style sheet. Here you can select the version of the style sheet so you can uh, use 1.0 version or 2.0 or 3.0. I choose to use uh, 2.0 for this demonstration and also you can add documentation annotations for, for your style sheet. So I'll check this also and then create. We see that the style sheet is created. We have here the version and then the documentation of, uh, of the style sheet. Oxygen comes with a built-in schema for documentation and uh, this is uh, an element that can be introduced in the style sheet. But you can use also other, uh, other schemas or you can use uh, HTML, a predefined set of HTML or Dogbook or uh, Dita or your custom language for documentation. We see that uh, uh, the documentation element has a different color from the elements, from the XSL elements. This is because 
uh, oxygen allows you to set different colors depending on the prefix. So you can have one color for, for the documentation, one color for the XSL elements, and one color, for example, for the HTML that you introduce in the XSL. Now let's start the content completion in our XSL. So I'll introduce an XSL prefix, and here we see all the available elements in this context, or the XSL elements that can be inserted in this context. And also, you have documentation for these elements in the right. And we can see that we have also the link to the specification, so we can easily see what this element uh, does. I'll insert a template here, so I'll insert and then enter to select it. I can see that uh, the uh, you can see that the uh, template is highlighted to red. This is because the, there is an error here. Uh, you need uh, to set the name of the, or the match of the template in order to, to be valid. So Oxygen provides validation as a type and uh, the errors are highlighted in the, in the editor and you can easily uh, create a valid style sheet. So you can visualize here the error from the caret, but you can also use the validation action from the toolbar and all the errors from the style sheet are displayed in the in the bottom of the editor. So, so now I insert a match attribute and we see that also we provide content completion for XPAT and also documentation. I'll choose to match the root here and then I'll insert an XSL apply templates and a select attribute and here in the select attribute we can see that all the functions that can be inserted are displayed by Oxygen and also uh, you have documentation for these functions. When you insert a function you can see also the parameters are highlighted in the uh, documentation and you can easily identify what parameter you need to insert now and after you insert a parameter the next parameter is displayed and highlighted so you can easily see what parameter you need to insert now. Uh, I will leave this empty so just apply templates and save so we've seen that uh, if you want to create a new style sheet, you can use the wizard dialog and uh, this allows you to set the version and also um, the documentation for the style sheet. You can choose between 1.0, XSMT 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. We also provide documentation for style sheet components. Uh, the content completion for XSLT and XPAT helps you to edit your style sheet. And also we have documentation for XSLT and XPAT elements. The validation as you type support helps you to easily uh, see the errors as you uh, create your style sheet. So the next step is to associate the XML file with the XSL and generate an output. I will switch to Oxygen. To associate uh, the XML with the XSL, we need to create a transformation scenario. For this, I'll use the configure transformation scenario from the toolbar. And here I'll create new XSLT transformation. First, you need to set the name of the transformation. By default, it's the name of the style sheet, the file that you create. Then the storage. Uh, we see that we can save the transformation scenario in project options or in global options. If you store it in the project options that you can then you can share it with your team by sharing your project. For the XML URL you need to set I want to set the books XML. So I will choose from the pop-up from the already opened uh, XML the XML URL. And for the XSL URL you can uh, use the editor variable current file URL or you can set the URL of the style sheet. Uh, I'll use the, the editor variable. If you use an editor variable then you can 
reuse this uh, scenario also for other style sheets. Uh, Oxygen provides multiple transformation engines uh, because I'm on Windows here. We can see that we have msxml.net, but also Saxon Enterprise Edition, Home Edition, Saxon 6, Salon, and XSLT Proc. But you can also define your own uh, external transformer. I leave the Saxon Personal Edition for my transformation. You also have some parameters for the style sheet extensions and other information. In the FO processor tab, you can check this. You can check this if you want to perform an FO processing and you want to transform to PDF, RTF, or other formats. I want to transform to HTML, so I don't need this. I'll, I'll check it. And in the output tab, you can uh, preview the result of the transformation as HTML, XML, or SVG, or you can save the result in a file and open in a system application. I'll choose to save the result. So I will set a name for the output file and I'll choose to open in browser. Then I save this. And now if I apply my transformation scenario using the apply transformation scenario from the toolbar, we see that an HTML file is created and all the text from the XML is it's added in the HTML. So now, now I'm sure that my transformation works and is configured correctly. So to associate an, an uh, XML file with an XSL, you need to create a transformation scenario. In my transformation scenario, I did, I did some uh, just uh, I just did, uh, I just set the uh, XML file and uh, the output and the rest I leave it as default. You can also save the scenario in project or in global options. Uh, we provide multiple transformation options, engines, but you can also use the FO processing. Uh, you can save the result or you can preview the result of the transformation without saving it uh, on disk. The next step in my demo is to generate a table with books. So let's switch to oxygen. And this time we see that the XSLT input view from the right presents the structure of the XML file. So because I define the transformation scenario, the XSLT input view presents this structure. And you can easily identify the elements from the XML file and you can also drag and drop a node from the XSLT input view and for example create a template here that matches the node that I dragged. Because uh, the XML file has a namespace, the namespace declaration is inserted here and also a prefix, but you can also set this as XPAD default namespace in Stylesheet. So I'll copy this from here and then we don't need to use a prefix and here control space to start the content completion xpath default namespace and select this and paste the namespace of the XML here. Now if I delete these templates and I insert again we see that the namespace and the prefix is not inserted, so Oxygen is aware of the XPA default namespace. We have also the books uh, template, the HTML file. This is how the output should look like. So I'll copy this template from here and I'll paste it in my template. We see that now an HTML will be generated with a head a body. In the body we have a title, then the table, and for each uh, row in the table a book should be generated. So I will create a template to match the book and create a row for each book. I'll copy this from here. Copy the row, cut, and replace it with an apply template. So start the content completion apply templates and I'll select the book. 
we see that the content completion node is aware of the XML instance and presents the nodes from, from the XML instance. So after you define the transformation scenario, not only the XSLT input view, but also the content completion presents the nodes from the XML. And also the content completion is aware of the context and presents only the children of the books. I'll select the book now. And here I insert a template to match the book. And I'll paste the row here. Now, if I save my style sheet and I transform again, we see that a table with books is generated, has a static content because I didn't use the content from the XML, but now it presents like a table. So we see that you can use the XSLT input view to visualize the structure of the XML file and this helps you to create your style sheet. Also you can drag and drop notes from the XSLT input view to create templates or other elements in the style sheet. Uh, we are, uh, Oxygen is aware of the XPAD default namespace and uh, you don't need to introduce this uh, uh, prefix. Uh, the content completion also presents the elements from the XML instance and it's aware of the context, so presents only the, the elements from the context. The next step is to generate the images in the output. So in my XML file I have, I have an image element with a description and a source and I want to generate this image in the HTML file. So I'll switch to Oxygen in the books uh, template. We have here the image. I will cut this from here and I'll replace it with an apply templates and I'll create a template for the image. This time I will uh, use the code templates. So when you press control space here, the, content, the code templates are displayed. These are small document fragments that can be inserted uh, in your style sheet and helps you to easily create uh, different uh, fragments of XSL. Oxygen com comes with a built-in set of uh, templates, but you can define your own in, in options. Here I need to insert an apply template with select and I typed 80 and then enter to select the uh, apply template. Then here I need to insert to match the image and I'll add some space here. Here I need to insert a template with match and control space and the template with match uh, code template is presented and I can select it. Then insert the image node, enter and paste the image element here. Now I need to replace this with uh, content from the XML. So we see that in the document instance we have an image element which has a description and a source. So here we need the value of the source. So if I start the content completion here, the attributes from the image are presented. So I can select the source. Then here we need to insert the description. In a similar way, I insert the description attribute. And now if I transform my document, we see that also the images are presented for my books. So we see that you can use code templates uh, to insert small document fragments. We have a, a predefined set of code templates, but you can define your own. Uh, we see that the content completion also presents the attributes from the context. So when you are in the uh, image uh, template, the attributes from the image element uh, were presented. The next step is to create a title with a link. So we have a title element here and on the book we have the target URI. 
switch to oxygen and we see here that uh, we have the title with a link because the value of the title is used in two places I will create a variable for this so I will insert here an XSL variable and I will set the name as title and select the value of the title node of this variable I will insert also another variable for the title URI variable title URI and I will select the value of the target URI of the book then I need to replace this content with the value of the variables so I'll delete this uh, and then if I insert here dollar we see that the variables and the parameters from the content completion or from the context are presented in the content completion window so we can easily select a variable here we can select the title URI and here in, I need to insert the title value so also set insert dollar and select the title then here I need to insert an XSL value of and select the value of the variable title now I want to reuse this uh, code and uh, generate uh, a template that uh, creates a link with, uh, with title for this you can select and use the, the uh, refactoring actions create template from selection this creates a template with name so first I need to create, set the name of the template link title I can preview my modifications we can see here that the title with, uh, with the link is replaced with a call template and the parameters, the variables from the selection are automatically detected by oxygen and, and as, are passed as parameters to the, to the template we see that the title URI and the title has passed as parameters to the template and here is the template that it's inserted now I will accept these modifications and they are done also in the editor now and we can see here the call template and the template created here with the parameters and the title with link now I will save my style sheet and generate again the output and we see that we have also the titles for the books generated with the links so we see that uh, the that oxygen presents the variables available in context in the content completion window also you can use refactoring actions like create template from selection to uh, generate a template with name and oxygen automatically extracts the variables from the context and pass them as parameters you can preview the refactoring results in a, a diff window and you can accept or reject the changes the next step is to generate also the author in, uh, in the output so let's switch to oxygen this time I'll, I'll select this and delete I'll need to insert the value of the author element in my style sheet so I'll just drag and drop the author node from here and drop it here a pop-up is displayed with all the actions that can be performed uh, in this place uh, that matches the author node so I can insert an XSL for each author or value for copy of or other actions I need a value for my demo now I save this and I transform again and we see that we have also the author of the books presented in the output 
So we can see that using the drag and drop support, you can drag an element from the XSLT input view and easily create uh, style sheet elements. The next step is to add also the book info in the output, the paperback, publisher, and ESBM. So let's switch to Oxygen. And I want to replace this with the value of the paperback node. Uh, I'll use the code templates. So I insert here V and control space. And all code templates that start with V are presented. I can select the value of select code template. And then the paperback node here. In a similar way, I'll replace also this with the publisher. So this time I'll insert directly FOS and control space and you don't need to choose anymore the code template. The code template is inserted automatically. Here I'll select the publisher and, and also for ESDN value of select and select the ESDN. Now if I save my style sheet and I transform it we see that also the book info is presented in the output. So we have here the book info. So you can use the code templates. This helps you to insert these small document fragments and you can easily edit your style sheet. The current position is set automatically in the attribute value and the content completion is started. So you can easily select a node from the content completion or the function. The next step is to generate also the description of the book. So let's switch to Oxygen. I'll create a template to match the description and I'll enter the value of the description in a, in, in a para. So I'll delete this and replace it with an apply templates. I'll use the same code templates. Apply templates with select and description element here. Then I insert here a template with match and I will select the template and the description node. Here I will insert a paragraph and in the paragraph I need to generate the content of the description so I will insert an XSM apply templates. Now if I generate my output, I see that also the description of the books is presented in the output. So we see that uh, it's easy to create a style sheet from scratch and uh, generate uh, an output. Uh, you can use the XSLT and the expat content completion for this. Also the XSLT, XSLT input view helps you to easily uh, visualize the structure of the XML. Also we use the code templates to create these uh, document fragments uh, uh, more easily. Also the validation helps you to uh, see the errors as you type and the errors are highlighted in the editor. We define the transformation scenario to generate uh, uh, the output and we have support for multiple engines. The next step in my demo is to identify an XSLT uh, component and uh, see all the occurrence from the file and also rename this XSLT component. So let's switch to Oxygen. We can see that when you are with the card on a definition of a component, here it's a variable, all the occurrences of the component are highlighted in the editor and also you can see them in the range ruler and you can click to go to them. Also we can go on a reference and all the occurrences are highlighted. If I go on a template with name, this LinkedIn title, also the definition of the template is highlighted. You can use control and click to go to the definition of a component if you are on a reference. So control click and automatically shows the definition of the template. Now let's rename a component. So I can rename this component for this 
I need to use the quick cutscenes menu, rename component action, and this component can be renamed in place. So when you change the name of the component, the name is changed in all the places from the style sheet, then click hit enter to rename it. So it's easy to identify a component in our style sheet. I had only two places, but here you can see that the component can be highlighted in multiple places if you have uh, other references. You can rename it uh, using the rename in place action. And also you can go to the definition of the component using the control click uh, support. The next step is to generate this books a group by technology. So we have XSLT books, XML books, and other technologies. So let's switch to Oxygen. If I go in my XML file, I can see that we have here an attribute on the book X that says XML technology for this book. It's an XSL. Uh, let's see all the values of the attributes uh, of the technology attributes from the, this document. For this, I can use the export toolbar. And here I can enter book. And from the book, I want to select the technology attribute and then hit enter. And the results are presented in, in the pane, in the bottom of the editor and you can see all the values of the technology attribute. You can use also the expat builder. In the right you have this expat builder that helps you to insert uh, more complex uh, uh, expat expressions. So let's say you want to insert to see only the distinct values of the technology. So uh, I'll see here, I'll insert here a function, distinct values and in the function I'll insert book and technology. Then I'll press execute expat and the results are presented in the bottom. We can see all the technologies of the book but now are distinct values. The expat builder also has the support for uh, to, to see uh, the favorite expat expression. So we can save some expat expression and you can see the values in the, in the tooltip. Also we have a history for this and you can see the previous expat expression that you performed. Now let's switch to our XML, XSL file. Close this. Now I want to go to the books template and uh, group these uh, books by by technology. So to, the, to find the template, you can use the outline. This presents uh, all the components that are, are defined in your style sheet. So you can easily go to a component. Here we have only templates, but you can have also uh, parameter variables or other components. And you can easily filter and find a component. Let's say I want to find the books and you can easily find all the templates that starts with book and you can go to the books template. Now, after the title, here the table with books is generated. Now I want to insert an XSL for each element, for each group and select the book. And I want to group these books by technology. So I insert the technology attribute here. Then for each group, I want to create a table. So I'll insert a table element. I'll set, I'll set the same, same cell spacing, 12 pixels. And in the table, I'll insert an apply templates and select the current group. So I'll use the current group function, which gives me the uh, 
books with, uh, with the technology. Then I want to set also a title for this group and I will set here an H2 and in this I will set the value of the technology so I will drag the technology attribute from the XSL input view and insert the XSL value of technology then I want to insert also a horizontal line here now if I comment the old, ver the old table using the contextual menu toggle comment I save my style sheet and I transform I see that now the books are presented group by technology so we have here XSL we have XSLFO RelaxNG so we see that you can use XPath toolbar to perform XPath on, uh, on an XML document uh, also if you have complex XPath expressions you can use the uh, XPath builder uh, you can uh, uh, perform XPath using uh, 1.0, 2.0 or 3.0 uh, we also have content completion in the XPath toolbar and uh, XPath builder and validation of the XPath expression that we enter the outline helps you to identify a component uh, from the style sheet uh, here you can see that in the outline are presented also the parameters, variables, functions and others and also uh, the errors if you had an error in the function then it's highlighted in the outline also so you can easily see if there is an error the next step uh, in my demo is to generate two HTML files the first one uh, will generate the books as they are in the XML and the second one will generate the books grouped by technology so let's switch to oxygen and this time I will insert a parameter in my style sheet so XSL parameter set the name to group by technology and the value will be false by default then here I'll insert a choose uh, when otherwise so I'll use the code template and select from the code template the choose when otherwise uh, template then here I need to insert the value of the parameter group by technology so when the value of the parameter is true then the for each group should be used and I need to move this block of code in the when element for this I will press alt key and move and, and the up to move the block of the selected block then tab to indent it in a similar way I'll move also this block of code in the otherwise then I'll use the toggle comment action from the contextual menu to uncomment the table so now when the value of the parameter is true then the uh, books will be grouped by technology and the table will be generated for each technology otherwise the old uh, books the books will be generated uh, in the old version as they are in the XML file so now to generate uh, both uh, HTML files in both modes I'll create a new scenario so I'll go to configure transformation scenario I'll duplicate my current scenario I'll set a name for it let's say books group then in the parameters we can see that oxygen automatically detects the parameters from the style sheet and presents the documentation and the default value of the parameter you can edit this parameter and you can pass another value to the template using to the style sheet using the the current scenario so I'll set true 
value for this parameter and to be evaluated as boolean I need to set evaluate as xpad then click OK and for, for the output I will set another name for the output file let's say books group HTML and now I will save this scenario now we have two scenarios associated with uh, with my current style sheet I will save and if I want to apply the transformation I can use the apply transformation scenario actions and both scenarios are applied and we have here both outputs so have the books grouped and also the books as they are in the XML file also you can use the transformation scenario view to visualize the current associated uh, scenarios you can see also that we have here uh, two scenarios that are not associated but can applied on, can be applied on the current uh, file you can apply a scenario from here uh, just by double click on it and it's performed or you can select uh, multiple scenario and apply them you can also filter the scenario here you can say I want only something that matches with group for example and only these scenarios are presented so this uh, transformation scenario view helps you to easily ma manage the associated scenarios so we see that uh, Oxygen automatically detects the parameters from the style sheet uh, when you create a scenario and using a scenario you can pass a parameter value to the to the style sheet you can perform multiple transformation at a time if you uh, apply multiple uh, transformation scenario and also you can use the transformation view to uh, easily see the the associated scenarios or to apply a transformation or to filter them the next uh, the next step is to document your style sheet so when you create style sheets you need to also document this to uh, in order for your team to understand what uh, the style sheet does so oxygen comes with a built-in schema for documentation that I told you about and this is uh, this doc elements that can be inserted uh, in the in the style sheet these are from an oxygen namespace you can see here xd and allows you to insert uh, a, a document uh, and some styling uh, information so you can add a bold here on, or an italic or add a link to another documentation element I'll add a bold for this parameter for example and set um, set a documentation specifies so specifies if the books should be grouped by technology you can also use a contextual action from the source menu add component documentation and this automatically adds also a para element you see and you can uh, insert the documentation here I'll generate a table with books So you can use this schema for documentation or you can use other languages uh, Oxygen also supports a, a subset of HTML or dark book or uh, data but uh, you can use also your custom schema for documentation if you want now if I go to the link title template and I use the same action here source add component documentation we can see that oxygen automatically adds also the parameters 
scripts from the from the template and you can easily insert the documentation of the parameters then is, this is the title the URI the URI for the title and this is the some documentation okay now I've seen this so Oxygen provides this built-in schema for documentation that uh, allows you to insert uh, the documentation for your style sheet but as I told you also supports other language like, like HTML uh, subset of HTML, Darkbook, Vita or your custom language you can set your own custom language also has this action to add documentation for a component and uh, this helps you to uh, to insert also the documentation for parameters automatically. Uh, the generate documentation, so we provide also support to generate documentation for a style sheet. Let's switch to Oxygen and I want to generate my doc the documentation for my style sheet. For this I'll use the generate documentation action from, from the toolbar. Here you can set the format of the documentation so you can generate in HTML format or you can provide your own format. For this you need to create some style sheets and you can split the documentation in multiple files by location, component or namespace. We have also here some uh, settings uh, for generations like uh, to generate the templates or not, the functions and uh, some of the details of the components can be filtered. I'll leave the default settings and generate the documentation for my style sheet. We can see that in the left the table of contest is uh, generated so all the components from the style sheet are presented here and you can click on a component to see the documentation of that component. Also we have references so we can see that in the books the group by technology parameter is used and you can go to the documentation of that parameter by clicking it and you can see here the documentation and you can go see from where this parameter is used so it's used from the books template if you go in the book template we see that this uses a link title template this is a template with name and you can go to the reference and also we have here the user documentation so you see the documentation that I entered in my style sheet is presented in the uh, HTML that contains the documentation of the style sheet. Also you can filter some of the details from the documentation. Let's filter the source. So we can see now that all the source are collapsed and you can expand them and see the information and then collapse them again. So Oxygen generates documentation in HTML format and you, or you can provide uh, your custom format. Also uh, has uh, some settings to generate uh, group by, uh, to generate uh, in multiple files. Um, in the documentation we have a table of contents with links of, uh, uh, of the components from the style sheet. You can uh, go to the links just by clicking them and we have also the user documentation generated in the HTML file and also support to hide some of the information from the, from the HTML. So thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions that you didn't ask yet, you can add them now. Uh, George will read some of the questions that you already added. So thank you. Thank you, Octavian. We received hundreds of questions, <laughs> actually, so I, I'm not sure how many we'll be able to uh, go through uh, in this uh, four or five minutes that we have left. Uh, uh, one question was uh, if you can apply transformations on multiple files uh, or on a folder. 
maybe while I read some uh, other questions and I reply, respond to some, you can show uh, Octavian how you can set the transformation scenario on a folder. You can apply the transformation action also batch on a set of files or on a folder. Uh, this can be done from the project. You can select the files and use the contextual menu transform apply transformation scenarios action or you can select in a similar way the a folder and use the transform apply transformation action uh, and uh, when you use this action then all the files uh, that have scenarios associated from this folder are uh, uh, the scenarios are applied so if I perform the transformation I see that uh, the scenarios, the two scenarios that uh, I had uh, associated with the files from the folder are uh, applied. So in my case only the books XSL uh, had uh, these scenarios associated. If I had also four other files then these also were applied. Uh, you can also associate scenario for, for those files. You can see here all the files that are not uh, associated with scenarios. So in the results, uh, also provide uh, also oxygen provides uh, another action in the transform menu, the configure transformation scenario action. This allows you to configure a transformation scenario that uh, will be applied on every file from from the folder. So you can create here a diff, uh, an XML transform an XML to XSL uh, transformation or other type of transformation, then set the name, let's say generic transform and then you can save it, uh, it's the same uh, uh, scenario dialog, uh, save it in project or global. Uh, for the XML URL you need to set uh, an editor variable in order to be expanded to the current file being transformed from that folder and for the XSL URL you need to set the XSL that you want to apply let's say we select books XSL here then in the output you can use also macros and uh, editor variables and this time let's say I want to use the current file name editor variable and set the, this ex, is expanded to the current file name that is being transformed so to the name of the XML file or say current file name HTML and now if I associate this scenario with uh, with all the files from uh, from the folder then we can see if we go on a file and we use this configure transformation action we can see that this generic transformation is associated. This is useful when you have multiple XMLs uh, in, a, in a folder and you want to transform them with uh, the same style sheet. Many questions were related to uh, will the recording or the sample project files or the slides or uh, all the resources we used uh, during the webinar will this may be made available? Yes, they will be made available and uh, you will receive a follow-up email with the direct link to that page that will contain all these resources. Probably we will compile also a list of frequently asked questions or a list of questions, uh, questions asked during the webinar and made this available also on that page. Uh, uh, I also want to mention that uh, the uh, abbreviation, the code templates uh, that we provide for XLT uh, were contributed by M. David Peterson. Uh, he used to be active on the XSLT list and he contributed the standard uh, XSLT code templates in Oxygen. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, a question rela related to the documentation was if the documentation can be applied on multiple style sheets or if you have included imported style sheets. Yes, the documentation will generate uh, automatically all the references, all the documentation for all these uh, style sheets. Okay, uh, 
uh, then we had questions what are the benefits of using XSLT uh, you know it's a platform independent uh, uh, XML it, it's an open standard it's uh, uh, there, there are many XSLT implementation in, in this uh, language designed for processing XML uh, another question was uh, if there is any movement on the part of browser vendors to provide XSLT2 support in the browsers. Not that I'm aware of, but there is Saxon Client Edition, which is an open source project uh, since XML Prague this year, so since February, and uh, you can use that uh, in any uh, browser, uh, any modern browser that supports JavaScript. Uh, what is the difference between apply templates and uh, template uh, and call template? Uh, apply templates uh, will uh, trigger the templates that match on uh, the nodes selected by the select attributes uh, attribute in apply templates. So the, the context node will be changed, while call template will apply a template with a given name on keeping the the current node, the current context. Um, uh, what is the context when uh, executing expat expressions through the expat builder or uh, and that is uh, the context is uh, set by uh, the current location it will be the element at the current location uh, a list of the abbreviation shortcuts maybe uh, Octavian you can show uh, in the options where there are all the XSLT the abbreviations, the code templates for XSLT, uh, so you can uh, uh, then go on, uh, into the oxygen you options can and insert here code, code and there. templates, and you can find here the page. This is the page with the predefined code templates of, uh, and you can see that uh, they are also for uh, for X query, XSD. So are for also for the other editors, and here we can see the templates, code templates for the XSL editor, and you can create one from here and set the name and the, the a description, the content, and here we can select on which editor should be applied. So in your case, should be on an XSL editor. So this is how a code template should look like. This is the content, and uh, you need to insert uh, this uh, editor variable caret in order to place the caret uh, in that position after the code uh, the code template is inserted. Okay, I will get uh, uh, the control then. And uh, another question was, uh, where is the XSL list, and what is the XSL list? So if you go on. Uh, uh, Google and ask for XSL list, you will see the link, the first hit, it's uh, a list provided by Mulberry Technologies, uh, but it's a very active list and uh, if you post a question on this, an XSLT question on this list, you will get an answer in the following minutes, basically. Uh, let me see what we have. We have a number of upcoming events, webinars and conferences. Uh, the next event will be uh, uh, learn how to create content with gray structure and gray language. It's a webinar hosted by Acrolinks and presented uh, uh, where we are also invited to present Oxygen and they showed the Acrolinks uh, plugin, the Acrolinks integration with Oxygen. Then we'll have uh, in May 29th, we have authoring data with Oxygen. Uh, this is the webinar is structured again in two parts. So in May, uh, we will have first part, and then in June, we'll have the second part. Then we have the other two XSLT uh, development with Oxygen webinars. As I said, in the next one, we'll look into developing with uh, more complex style sheets where we have multiple modules multiple style sheets, we'll look more into uh, refactoring actions, uh, views that uh, provide insight into the stri style sheet structure or uh, the style sheet hierarchy views or the component dependencies that shows uh, how, where a co component is used from. Uh, 
Then in the last uh, webinar uh, on XSLT, uh, we will cover debugging, profiling, and unit testing. Uh, we will be participating also at a number of conferences, uh, User Assistance Europe, XML London, Information Energy, Congility, all in UK. Then later on, uh, we'll be at uh, TC World, TCOM, and the Data Europe in Germany. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I think we are a little out of time, uh, but I see that uh, many of you are still with us. Uh, again, uh, the recording will be available. We will reply to all the questions uh, questions are asked during the webinar, uh, following by email if there was no answer received during the webinar. And all the resources will be available on uh, on our website, uh, basically you should be able to find them uh, uh, on on uh, this page where the registration button will be uh, removed and you will see the recording and uh, the additional resources here. Thank you again and we look forward to meet you again at our upcoming webinars or conferences. Goodbye.